way too much. There's no way I'm going to be able to live up to this. Before I even start, though, I've, I've got to tell you that um, we all do different kinds of work. And I think I must say that you all owe Joe another round of applause. that will actually sit down and put pen to paper or put fingers to a keyboard and make some of this stuff happen that I can't do, I won't do, and, and in fact I, I'm sure 99% of you in here won't do. So that's a whole different uh, whole different ball of wax there. Am I not speaking loud, Dan? Tell you what, let me pull it over here. Pull it over the side. I gotta have my hands for a minute. <laughs> Is that better? Okay. Sorry about that. I told him I got it in my hands for you, man. I'm Italian. <laughs> I didn't grow up in a house with guns. Um, I, I'm not a hunter. I'm not into Alaskan and Bambi, although I support your right to do that. I did grow up in a house where my, my father was an expert on the founding of the country. So I was steeped in what the Second Amendment was all about. I completely understood it. And when I was 21, I moved out on my own, and a friend of mine bought me a gun, showed me how to use it, and later in life, after I became a chiropractor, I had, uh, I lived in Houston for a short period of time, and one of my patients was an assistant DA. He's the one that convinced me to carry it. Now, at that time in the state of Texas, that was illegal. You could not carry a weapon on your person in any way, shape, manner, or form. You could carry one in your car, but not on your person. He said, Susanna, carry your gun. He said, you don't see this stuff, but I see it. I see it on a daily basis. So he actually convinced me to carry this thing illegally for a period of time. Some years later, in fact, in 1991, my parents and I went to a local cafeteria. This was up in Colleen, Texas. It was in the middle of the day beautiful sunny day. It happened to be boss's day, and it was the day after payday. The place was packed. In fact, we weren't able to sit at our usual table. We had to kind of sit off on the side. A friend of mine was the manager of the restaurant. He came and sat and joined us for, for lunch. And we were finishing lunch, and the manager friend got up and went to the kitchen to check on a couple of things. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, this truck drives through a floor-to-ceiling window and I mean, plows through, knocks a number of the tables over, and it came to a rest, still kind of bouncing. And we thought, oh my God, you know, it's a terrible accident. And I actually began to rise up to go help some of the people that he had knocked over. And then we heard gunshots. My father and I immediately got down on the floor, put the table up in front of us, my mother got down behind us. Now remember, this was 91. These random shootings were not occurring then. So I'm thinking in my head, is this a robbery? I was waiting for him to say something like, all right, everybody put your wallets up on your tables. But the shooting continued. I remember thinking, I guess because I watched too much television, I remember thinking, well, I wonder if it's a hit. I wonder if there's somebody important in here. But the shooting continued. This guy was simply walking from person to person, taking aim, pulling the trigger, going to the next one, taking aim, pulling the trigger. It took me a good 45 seconds, which is a really long time, to realize that the guy was simply going to walk around and kill people. That's all he was there to do. When I realized it, I thought, I've got him. I've got this guy. Realized that we're down, the table up is in front of us. He, he was maybe 15 feet from me. At this point, everybody else in the restaurant is pretty much down. I'm not a very good shot, but I can tell you I've hit much smaller targets at much greater distances. I had a place to prop my arm on the table. I, I've got him. I've got him. And then I reached for my purse on the floor next to me and realized that a couple of months earlier I had made the stupidest decision of my life. My gun was 100 feet away out in the parking lot in my car because I did what most of you in here would do in that circumstance. Figure, what are the odds? What are the odds you're going to need a gun 
You know, I lived in a nice community. If I needed a gun, it was going to be if my car breaks down on a back Texas road somewhere. It sure as heck wasn't going to be in a restaurant, a crowded restaurant, in the middle of the day. And I was worried about getting caught with it. I didn't want to lose my livelihood. I didn't want to lose my livelihood. So there I was, sitting on the floor, thinking, well, crap. What do I do now? I remember looking at my purse and do I throw it at him? You know, I, I remember looking at the butter knife and the salt shaker. You can't go up against a guy with a nine millimeter with a butter knife. At that point, my father took my attention. He was next to me and he began to raise up. He said, I gotta do something, I gotta do something. He's gonna kill everybody in here. So I grabbed him by the shirt collar and I tried to hold him down and said some choice words to him. But when he saw what he thought was a chance, he broke free from me and ran out of me. But the guy had complete control. All he did was simply turn, and he shot my father in the chest. My dad went down, he had covered maybe half the distance. He went down in the aisle, and uh, as horrible as this may sound, I basically wrote him off at that point. He was still alive and still semi-conscious, but I saw the wound and I, I wrote him off. The good news was that it made the killer changed directions. Instead of continuing directly toward me and my mom, he went off just to my left and continued around the room this way. Shortly after that, and we were, we were locked in. We were kind of up in a corner. Shortly after that, I heard another window crash. And I, again, I thought, well, is there another terrorist coming in? I was actually thinking terrorist even back then. But then I saw people getting out the back. Somebody had broken one of the big windows in the back, and I saw people getting out that way. So I'm peeking up over the top of the table, and when I saw what I thought was a chance, when he had his back to me, I stood up and I grabbed my mother and I said, come on, come on, we gotta run, we get out, we gotta get out of here. And my feet grew wings. And I ran out that back window. As soon as I got out the back, I ran into my manager friend who had come out a side door. And he said, oh, thank God you're okay. And I said, yeah, but dad's been hit and it's bad. And I turned to say something to my mother and realized she had not followed me. I went where most of the other people that got out had gone. It was across the street to some apartment complexes. They were already on the phone to 911. Shortly afterwards, the cops formed a perimeter around the place. And oh, by the way, the police officers were in a building one door down. They were at a hotel one door down in a seminar. And interestingly enough, the hotel didn't allow guns. They had to stop and get their unloaded weapons out of their vehicles, their locked trunks. Several of these guys were patients of mine, and they told me later, they said, Susie, all we had to do